The second of four Steven Spielberg films to be released or re-released this summer is called Back to the Future. Leonard Maltin is here with a review. <laughs> you made it! Yeah! Welcome to my latest experiment. This is the big one, the one I've been waiting for all my life. What an experiment, and what a lot of fun. Back to the Future is a high-energy film full of great ideas and good spirits. And it starts out with a premise I can never resist. Time travel. Now, here's the twist. Michael J. Fox travels back to the 50s and has to play matchmaker for his own mom and dad. It's going to be a real challenge to get these two together. Lorraine? I'd like to meet my good friend, George McFly. Hi. It's really a pleasure to meet you. How's your head? Oh, uh, good. Fine. Oh, I've been so worried about you ever since you ran off the other night. Are you okay? There's one complication after another, and there's a kind of vicarious kick in figuring out how Michael J. Fox is going to work it all out. Incidentally, he's terrific. And at his side is Christopher Lloyd, who's just dynamite as the mad scientist responsible for the whole thing. Back to the Future takes a while to get going, but it actually gets better as it goes along, and the finale is a wow. Now, everybody talks about this as being a Steven Spielberg film, but the truth is it was written and directed by the team of Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis, and it has all the same ingredients as their other movies, I Want to Hold Your Hand, Used Cars, and 1941 which they wrote for Spielberg. There's the same zaniness, the same big sight gags, and the same frenetic race to the finish climax. But this time, it really works. I had a good time going back to the future, and I'm giving this film an eight. I'm Leonard Malton, Entertainment Tonight.